Hi, everybody. This is Pam Coey, and I'm in my studio, and I have Carol Mordecai Myers, who's from Colorado Springs. And Carol, are you in your studio right now? Studio. It's sort of uh, bare walls. But... <laughs> yeah. Well, the reason she has bare walls is because her amazing work is now hanging in a gallery, and we're going to be talking about her solo show. And Carol, why don't you tell us about your show? Well, great. So I was um, asked to do this show about a year ago. And um, at the time I was starting just to work and what kept coming up for me was this idea. Um, I had two recent events in my life. I had twin grandsons that were born right before COVID. And then I had this sudden onset of um, double vision, which can be some not so great things, but those have all been ruled out. It's really just kind of one little lazy eye muscle. But I kept having this name, seeing double, seeing double, seeing double. Um, and so, I started playing with that idea of doubling things, whether it was doubling colors or doubling a motif or um, pulling a print off one painting and putting it on another and doubling it over there. Interesting. It's not something that you would necessarily see. Uh, some things you would see painting to painting, but some of it's a little bit more subtle. So. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. um, I've enjoyed, uh, you know, getting to know you through the pro membership and you're in a special yeah. quiz group, which is Focus and Zoom, which was organized by Cynthia Lee, our pro admin. So let's take a look at your work. It's so yeah. fascinating and you've done so well, Carol. So congratulations on Thank such you. beautiful work. Okay, Carol. So um, this is one of your lovely paintings. It's cropped by PowerPoint, but here's your title. And you want to talk about G44 Gallery and, and the location and anything else you'd like to share with yeah. our audience. So G44 Gallery was started by um, Gundy Stevens, Gundaga Stevens. And she just recently moved um, downtown next to another gallery, Kreuzer Gallery. Gallery. And they're both these lovely um, women that have started these two galleries side by side in downtown Colorado Springs. And it's kind of brought this rejuvenation um, uh, to this street that they're on. I mean, it's a busy street anyway, but with, um, with a lot of restaurants and shops, but um, it's just so great to see them doing that in Colorado Springs. Very cool. Anywhere nearby, it'd be great to have you stop by. Oh, yes, right. And then, you know, I loved what you wrote in your artist statement, and I pulled this last phrase. You want to go over this and talk about, you can even just read it and talk about how, how your life uh, has impacted your art. Sure. So it's my hope is that the resulting work takes on several dimensions beyond two, dimensions of history, dialogue, meaning, and form. Not just seeing double, but seeing many times over. Right. One of the things that's really important to me in my painting is I almost love it when I look at it and can't remember how did I, you know, how did I do that? <laughs> <laughs> complexity to it that you can't quite recreate for yourself because of the history that's going on underneath it. And that shows the, the, the time. Um, it shows the dialogue that you're having with the work, uh, which I think we'll show a little bit later. Um, and then I'm trying to embrace this part of, um, aging, being a grandmother of twins, and also this seeing double, which I'm sure is also part of aging. So um, yeah, it's, yeah, it's a lot to uh, put into your artwork, but I, it, it makes it so much more meaningful to kind of know the story behind something. So all right, so let me move on to the other slide. Okay, now we've got a collection here. Now, what made you come up with this collection? And what is the, how does this collection have meaning for you? So this, this is the part of um, the Art and Success Pro. I started it when I was really ramping up for this show. One of the things that you have us do is get our collections together of things. And I thought, I'm not really a collector of things. So I looked around my studio and um, I have these leaves that are gilded. Um, wow. That are hanging on the wall. And then I a piece of rust that I found while walking. And when I put all of these together, it was like, oh my goodness. Yeah. Um, there is a continuity in what I'm pulling from my life or walks or saving little bits of paper. And I hadn't seen it before. This was really, really like hit me over the head. I, I it's, yeah, it seems like a simple thing. It's so worth doing. So well, thank you for that exercise. Awesome. When I look at your things, I mean, everything from the palette, like these more natural colors, the, the beautiful egg and the nest and 
I mean, you're a lover of nature. I see love curve linear forms and your appreciation for these colors that are actually quite sophisticated. They're not colors that come straight out of the tube, except for the red and the heart, you know, yeah, there's some saturation, but you feel like you're more drawn to them, more subdued colors. Mm -hmm. so. Interesting. Okay. Well, wonderful. Let's just see if we see anything in your work that is kind of connected to your collections. I'm sure we will. And now this is something interesting. I, um, for those who, who don't know, um, I am a big uh, promoter of documenting your art um, in stages so that you're being, you're able to look back on something, see where you were. And oftentimes it gives you confidence knowing that you got, maybe you got stuck at a certain point and here's where you got stuck, but look at the final painting. It should help, you know, most artists feel good to look back on how maybe they were stuck, but then they, they stuck with it and they finished their work. So tell us about this progression of work. And, and I will just let everybody know that we're going from left to right. And then we're going to go onto the bottom layer here and go from left to right again. And then we have the final painting in the next slide. So what, what was uh, this particular painting's journey like for you? So um, I love to start paintings. I know some people that that's hard for. For me, it's more um, middle to end stages that's harder. So the start, the one on the upper left, was really just fun putting down colors and shapes and still thinking a little bit. I mean, I wasn't not thinking, but just trying to vary sizes and values. And then my process is always taking off a little bit. So with this paint, it was washing it back a little bit to the second slide. There's some washing back in okay. areas, um, okay. which gives it a little bit of kind of a worn, a worn back look. And are um, you working in acrylic here with collage or just acrylic or? Um, this is, and I'm going to lean over and grab it. This is um, milk paint. So it's, oh, it's this right. Sinopia yeah. milk paint, which um, it's very thick. Okay. Uh, and before it cures, it, it you can wash it back. It gums up a little bit if you sand it, but um, okay, yeah. And so, so you're uh, how long have you been working with milk paint? Oh, you know, off and on for probably twelve years. I, I I'm very um, I really mix up my media a lot. I think it keeps me engaged yeah. with it a little bit. I, I love sure. I love that that you do that, Pam, as well with. Um, I, there's something about switching that it, hel it helps inform the other media that we're, that I'm doing. So I'm, I'm always happy to try new things. And, and do, you, do you mix, uh, like if you do a layer of milk paint, can you go over that with acrylic and then back to milk paint? Or is it like just milk paint? Um, there are some milk paints um, that I think that are powder form that I think you might be able to do that. I haven't done that. Usually what I'll do is I'll, um, I'll just start with the milk paint and then with this particular milk paint, I can't put the acrylic on top, but I can do oils or encaustic oh, on top. Very nice. Oh, that's so wonderful to know, especially for encaustic to know that you can go over milk paint, right? Yeah, well, and this particular milk paint, but I and um, I would have to experiment with the other milk paints that I've tried. Got this it. one I really love. It's 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 a it's got a little bit of linseed oil, I think, in it, and um, huh. it's, it's very luscious. Oh, nice. And uh, so do you do a lot of your encaustic work on top of a milk paint underpainting like this? Uh, uh, I do. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Wonderful. Um, yeah. I think all of my encaustics that are in the show, I think with the video that we'll see are started with milk paint. Okay. So as this painting progressed here from left to right, you know, we see some darks coming into play here and would you call this sort of the middle stage or still play or? Yeah, I think it's more, um, the middle stage, because I'm beginning to think about where things are going. I, I felt like everything was floating. And so I took the dark off, up to the, off the page on the upper left. Okay. And it's this conversation back and forth constantly of trying something. Maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. Pulling it back, putting it in. I think from the fourth to the fifth one, looking at it, I can see that um, I had a lot of these archways and I, I wanted something more specific. So in the fifth one um, in the lower left mm -hmm. in the upper left corner you can see that oh, I got yeah. some very deliberate um, <laughs> pieces put in <laughs> which ended up not staying the whole way but um, and then I think I shifted because I wasn't happy with that pink so the next I switched and I'm switching to oils probably right about here okay um, yeah and I switched it more to a salmony red yes uh, mm. 
And And then, (laughs) and then I took it away, but it is still there. Like that you can above the lower right squiggly line. When you see it in person, you can still see the salmon coming through. Isn't that beautiful? And, you know, people often with abstraction will say, well, why did you put all that paint on there? If you're going to cover it up, but it, you know, you wouldn't get this little hint if you hadn't done this. And I think that's the beauty of it. It's part of the history. It's, it is still there and you can scrape back and, you know, reveal and got this lovely calligraphy, lovely um, marks going here. There's this rhythm set up, you know, like marks, marks, marks. And then, you know, down here is it's, it's a real rhythm that I feel with this particular stage. And then, you know, you end up with this. Um, so here's the final and uh, wow. It's um it's a, you know, high, you know, we talk about the value and I don't know how much you were um, deliberately trying to make this a high key painting, but notice how the darks and the midtones really, um, they really sing. I mean, this beautiful turquoise over here, um, your darks are definitely the anomaly here and they're moving the eye around in a beautiful way from the entire composition. Thank you. Yeah. It's um, I I think for, I, I have to do um, an artist talk on Thursday Uh and one of the things I want to bring is this, because I, I think people don't understand that there's a progression that happens and you go through this so well in the Art and Success Pro. Of, you know, you, you have to start and not worry too much about where it's going. So I would have never been able to jump in right away and end up here. Yeah. It had to be sort of the progress over time. I mean, me. this, this painting looks like it's lived a life. It, it seriously does. It's, it, it's so complex in terms of the surface quality. You can't just do this in a few hours, you know, and people don't really understand how complex these paintings are that have to come from within. You have nothing really from the outside world, you know, except for maybe a few shapes or lines and things like that. But, you know, you are really working from the inside out. And, and didn't you say you used to do more realistic landscapes, right? Yeah, I started as a plein air painter and then I, I did um, figure drawing and figure painting and really more realistic. Yeah, it's, it's been a long, people think abstraction's easier. It's, <laughs> it's taken me years to get this to this point of being able to um, like get rid of any crutch of, of what I'm looking at and, um, and come from within. Yeah. Well, obviously you have quite a following. Um, you've done so well in your gallery show. Um, congratulations to you and the gallery for working together Thank so you. well. And obviously, you know, the people who purchase your work, they understand you and they see you and that's what they're purchasing is you, you know, you are really putting yourself into your artwork and, and, in just such a beautiful way. Now look at the, to, you know, now when I look at this painting, it so correlates with your collection, the colors and the shapes. It's almost like your uh, you took your collection, you painted it. It's pretty amazing, Carol. Wow. Well, and that's that was almost that was really unconscious I, uh, on my part because the collection I put together maybe uh, just not that long ago, but it, it it was a wonderful aha moment for me to see that there is a reason. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Even in you know, and and again, this non-objective work is so filled with meaning, but it's a language and we need to be able to decipher, read the language of non-objective art or abstraction. It's there. We're gonna play Carol's video of her show. Beautiful and feel free to say anything you like about the setup and well, I, I was really pleased with the way the gallery owner hung the work. I probably would have gone big, 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 medium, medium, medium. And I just, the way she mixes it up, she does a good job. So I think this is where, you know, a nice gallery and someone that does curating is can be really helpful. So then these are sort of pulling in on the individual pieces. Okay. Whether it's encaustic, this one's encaustic, whether they're encaustic or oil or acrylic, I, my process really is pretty similar. Um, of course, I can't wash back the encaustic, but I, I still do scrape back. Okay. Yeah, and is this a milk paint piece there? Uh-huh, milk paint and then oil. Mm-hmm. Okay. Nice. And then there's the piece that we had looked at more in depth. Nice. Okay. And another encaustic. 
Beautiful. It just looks so contemporary and clean. And your little ones? All the little ones have now sold. Those are encaustic? Uh, those are encaustic. Okay. Oh, beautiful. Mm. They just hang so well together. It's just such a nice uh, level of cohesion you've been able to achieve here. Just fantastic, Carol. Wow. Yeah. It must yeah. feel so good. <laughs> Not really good to drop everything off. <laughs> yeah. The work, it's a lot of work, but it, it's really rewarding. Yes. Yes. I remember during the Fizz call, I think you were saying, uh, obviously any show is so much work and, you know, could you envision right now doing another show? <laughs> Yeah. but that's like asking a woman who's just given birth, like, would you like to have another baby now? <laughs> Not quite yet. Yes. Yeah. But um, what, what is on your horizon? Like, what are you um, thinking about anything next for your next adventure, your next journey or. Yeah. You know, I wanted to, um, I really do want to dive into the brush making that you introduced in the art and success pro that just looks like so much fun. I've never done that before. And I, all I did because I was getting ready for the show is I did the one that had a little bit uh, like a cloth over it. Okay. And I love those marks. So I'm yeah. planning to um, do that and uh, like hopefully get some different materials for that. And really just to play for a little bit. I think Good. after the show, I just want to give myself space to uh, paint my walls, paint my floors, <laughs> clean up the studio and just play a little bit and, and, and as far as painting and, and explore, which sure. I just think is always good to do. Yeah. Now, how long did it take you to prepare for this show? Um, she asked me, I think it was last March or April, and I had already said yes to another show in October for oh. just um, three pieces. So, but I really didn't ramp up working on this one probably until about August. Oh. And I need, I think I'm going to give myself more time. <laughs> well, good for you. Well, congratulations again, Carol. It's just so wonderful to talk with you and get to know you. Um, we look forward to seeing much more of your work in the future. And um, thank you for your time. And, and anybody who's thinking about being a part of it, I, what I was telling Pam before, I so appreciated the community that this provides with Art and Success Crow because you can be really isolated when you're working in your studio and this brings people from all over together. So thank you're, you for all your effort. Uh, thank you so much, Carol. It's, it's been awesome for me. I feel so lucky and yeah, it's my happy place to go every day, especially during the pandemic when we've been a little secluded and isolated, you know, it is uh, a very warm and caring group. So I wish you the best um, and good luck with everything. And I guess I'll see you in the group. Thank Great. you. Thank you. Okay. Yep. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.